In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. I feel slightly hypocritical because surely if I'm going to speak about our Blessed Mother, the Virgin St. Mary, and the virtue of silence, then I should just say nothing. But I've been asked to speak. God has given us a gift of communication. And that gift is very important. It is essential. It is the way in which God communicates to us. We communicate with Him. And we communicate with one another. Of course, communication must be a way that is most effective and that works in the best way. We make the mistake quite often of thinking that to communicate we must always speak and to make a point we must always speak and to be strong and to be heard and to make a presence we must always speak. We must also know however that quite often when we speak if we do not speak properly it becomes the worst form of communication we don't make the right point and we end up in a worse position than what we wanted the first epistle of St. Peter chapter 3 verse 4 reads rather let it be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle, quiet spirit which is very precious in the sight of the Lord. What is important is not whether we speak or are silent. What is important is that our spirits become gentle and quiet. Quiet in their communication, quiet in their reflection, quiet in their conversation. Because we often make a mistake of saying that prayer or communication with God, more than a dialogue, is a monologue. We speak and speak and speak and then we speak some more. But we don't give time to listen. We don't give time to understand. It's no wonder that often we say we can't hear God. It's not that we can't hear God. It's that we're too busy speaking or being active. We're too busy doing things. It's something I must always remind myself, even me, in my ministry, which is for God, serving you, serving others, always trying to do more but I need to remind myself that being active speaking, teaching, preaching, praying is not what is asked of me alone but I am asked to be one who also has a gentle and quiet spirit and that gentleness and that quietness also leads me to having a deeper relationship with myself and with God. Psalm 62 1 reads this Truly my soul silently waits for God from whom comes my salvation. Do we really wait for God or are we too busy running? We'll meet God along the way if there's an opportunity. We'll encounter him if there's a chance. We'll listen to him if we have time. But do we wait for God? Do we stop? Does our life stop? Do we give an opportunity? The psalm says, my soul silently waits for God. Why? From whom comes my salvation? 
I will not be saved through my own words. I will not be saved through my own actions. I will not be saved through my activity and energy. Those are all wonderful things and we're asked to do them all. To speak, to preach, to pray, to be active, to work for the kingdom of God. We're asked to do that. But I will never achieve my goal of being with God here and in his kingdom if salvation does not come from him. And that comes from encountering him, dealing with him, speaking to him, but more importantly, listening to him. Where else am I going to understand? Where else am I going to know? Unless it comes from God himself. There's a wonderful proverb, Proverbs 17, verse 27, that reads, He who has knowledge spares his words. A man of understanding is of a calm spirit. He who has knowledge spares his words. If you have knowledge, you use your words sparingly. A few words. We often think that to speak means we understand. But I think we all know when we're sitting in gatherings and listening to people and dealing with people, those who speak most actually end up probably knowing least. We all know the story of the disciples of St. Anthony who were sitting with him. And they were asking questions and speaking and communicating. And as they kept doing this, one disciple was silent. And so St. Anthony, being a father, turned and said, Why are you silent? He said, My father, it is sufficient for me to look upon your face. Now imagine if it was sufficient for that disciple to look upon the face of St. Anthony, a human like us, a saintly human, a devout human, a holy human, but a human. How much more is it to sit quietly and look upon the face of God? To learn from that. We have such a wonderful tradition in our church of iconography. And that's why. Because as we pray, we look at the iconostasis. The iconostasis has icons. As you see, the icons are all gilt with gold. What's the gold symbolic of? The kingdom, eternity, the glory of God. And within the icons, you have our Lord sitting and reflecting upon him, looking upon his face. And as we look at these icons, we shift our vision ever so slightly. So it is no longer the replica of Christ that we see, but we move towards the sanctuary and we see him upon the altar. And looking upon him, upon the altar, we learn from him, we reflect on him, we listen to him. I was having a conversation earlier and I want you to be very careful of this. In all of our churches we now have these monitors and they're brilliant, they're a wonderful idea. Because they allow you to follow the liturgy. They allow you to follow the words. And while that is good, I want you to be careful that you are not distracted by them or by your books or by anything else you do. That you are not distracted by them from looking into the Holy of Holies. We're not just here to say the words. We're not just here to chant the hymns. We are here to encounter Christ and to meet him, to see him 
and to listen to him and to partake of him. Isaiah 30, 15 says, For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, In returning and rest you shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. Beautiful. I'll say it again. In returning and resting, you will be saved. Like I said, salvation doesn't come through our running. Salvation comes when we stop and we rest. And we reflect upon God. We meet with Him. We say, Lord, where are you? Where are you in my life? How is it that I can live with you today? And how is it that I can live with you tomorrow better than today? How is it that I can continue my whole life with you and be with you in everything I do? I want to hear your voice. I want to learn from you. I want to become strong in you. And then it goes on to say, in quietness and confidence shall be your strength. Don't think that strength comes from a loud voice. That's the case in the jungle. In the jungle, the animal that roars the loudest is the most powerful. In the jungle, the animal that appears the most aggressive is the most powerful. But we're not in a jungle. We are the image and likeness of God. And so we don't want to roar the loudest. We don't want to be the most aggressive. In actual fact, when we follow the example of our Lord to be meek and to be lowly, to be calm in spirit, to be confident in our quietness, And that's what we've seen in the history of our church. We have an incredible history of martyrdom. People who have not only sacrificed, but who have lost their lives for their faith. They didn't scream, they didn't shout, but they quietly and peacefully witnessed. Now, in most cases, you think, how does that help? How is quietness something that brings victory? Quite simple. When I am quiet, it is God who speaks. Speaks to me and speaks through me. One of the most powerful passages of Scripture is that when the high priest's servants do this and they come to take hold of our Lord Jesus Christ. Imagine this. Our Lord's in the garden with his disciples. Judas comes with the high priest's servants and the soldiers. He comes he embraces the Lord. By embracing the Lord, he gives them a signal. This is the one to arrest. They come to arrest him. Peter pulls out his sword, cuts off the high priest's servant's ear. They all stop. There's commotion. Our Lord says to them, stop. Peter, put your sword back in its place. And with quiet confidence, he says, why are you here? Who do you seek? They said, we seek Jesus of Nazareth. What happens next? He said, I am he. And what happened? They all fell back. The power is not in the sword. 
The power is not in a loud voice. The power is in the still confidence and strength. I am He. Now we cannot say I am He. What we can say is He is ours. I am His. I am with Him. It is not I, but Christ in me. If Christ is in me, which we know He is, and I am quiet, He will speak with confidence and with strength. If we go to Isaiah again, 32, 17, we read this. The work of righteousness will be peace. And the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. So the work of righteousness is peace. And the effect of righteousness is quiet. That's why, I'll give you an example. When you come to confession, you sit with a buna. And you confess. And you've offloaded all of your sins. How do you feel when you've walked out? Calm. Without a burden. Peaceful. No more turmoil. No more storm. Our Lord with his disciples in the boat, the storm erupts, he's sleeping in the back of the boat. The disciples are frantic, they're scared. They're looking for him, they're running around. They come to him and say, Lord, what are you doing? Why are you asleep? Do you want us to die? They're running, they're frantic, they're afraid. They have to run faster than the storm. You can't run faster than the storm. One thing you know about when you're in the sea is you can't beat a storm. The storm is bigger than you, faster than you, more powerful than you. Lord, what are you going to do? Do you want us to die? So the Lord stands up. Is this your problem? Is that storm your problem? Are you shouting and frantic and fearful because of this? Is that what you want solved? Is that why you're frantic? Is that why you accuse me of not loving you enough? Is that why you accuse me of forgetting you? Is that why you accuse me of leaving you to die? Is that what our relationship is now? The Lord stood up in the boat, looked, and said, Be, be still. And suddenly... There was a great calm. Not just a calm. A great calm. A storm that was going to take their lives suddenly became a great calm. In our own lives, we should have the same experience. We run to him. Lord, we're frantic. We're running. Stop running. Do you want me to save you? That's all you need to say. Come to me. Come to me and I will do what you want. One of two things will happen. Either I will calm the storm or I will allow you to walk through the storm like I did with Peter. Either way, the storm will not affect you. Either way, be still and know I am God. That stillness, that quietness, that silence is the secret of our strength in the Lord. Sometimes it's best to be quiet because when we open our mouths, we reveal ourselves. Our Lord warns us in Luke 6.45. He says, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good. And an evil man 
out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. You see, our mouths don't speak random words. Our mouths communicate what is inside. That's all. Good treasure, bad treasure, our hearts communicate it. What about St. Mary? St. Mary was silent. She was silent in many things. When the archangel came to bear witness and to preach her and to proclaim, to announce the birth of the Savior, she listened. She asked a question, how can this be? And she listened, reassured. And her response was, Behold the maid servant of the Lord. Let it be according to your word. I have no more I can say. But even more, in Luke 2, 34 and 35, when they went to the temple and they met with Simeon, then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for a fall and rising of many in Israel. This is not a normal child. This child of yours is destined for the rise and the fall of many in Israel. So far, so good. And for a sign which will be spoken against. Then he says this. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also. The thoughts of many may be revealed. A mother who hears a man of God saying to her, a sword shall pierce through your own soul. She didn't utter a word of this. She didn't say, she didn't complain, didn't grumble. She lived with this in her heart. She was silent about it. And all the time as she saw our Lord growing, she must have remembered these words, but she carried them in her heart. In performing his miracles, in living his life, in preaching his word, in being before the multitudes, in being received as a king into Jerusalem, in being betrayed, when the people said, crucify him, crucify him. This mother saw her son betrayed, saw her son imprisoned, captured, saw her son scourged, saw her son carrying his cross. saw her son crucified, pierced with a spear, nailed, crowned with thorns, die. And all of this time, she was remembering the words of Simeon, a, pier a sword will pierce through your own soul. But she was silent. Behold, the maidservant of the Lord. Even when our Lord was on the cross, his final words to her, son, your mother, woman, your son. She was quiet. She accepted. So often in today's world, we look at acceptance as weakness. Silence is weakness. I must say what I want to say. I must respond. I must fight. I must challenge. Sometimes silence is the greatest power we have. 
because it speaks much more than words. St. John Chrysostom has a wonderful saying. He says, let us always guard our tongue. Not that we should be silent, but that we should speak at the proper time. Silence does not mean silence forever. But silence means being silent when we should be silent and speaking when we should speak. And that's what St. John Chrysostom reminds us of. When God says to us, be silent, be still, be calm, it doesn't mean forever. Because as he reassured his disciples, he said you'll be brought before courts and synagogues and they will ask you to give account. And the words which you speak at that time, which the Holy Spirit will give you, no one can refute. So when it comes time for you to speak, I will give you words. But at a time of silence... Be silent and still listen to my voice and let me speak if I need to. We, hear, we learn so many, so many lessons from the Blessed Virgin Mary. Strength, conviction, power, dedication, obedience. But one of the greatest lessons is the stillness and the silence, and the calmness. That which can only come from God. This world cannot give us calm. This world does definitely not give us silence. And this world cannot give us salvation. If we seek salvation, it is from the Lord. If we want salvation, we must hear Him. And to hear Him, let us be still, let us be silent, let us be calm and remember that he is the God of our salvation, the one who calms the storms, the one who empowers the fallen and the one who calls us to salvation and speaks to our hearts. And glory be to God forever. Amen. Thanks a lot, Sayyidina, um, for coming and blessing our church and this uh, sermon. Uh, I think uh, everybody in uh, this church or uh, outside the church uh, needs this, um, more exercise about uh, the silence in our life. Um, and we ask Sayyidina to come uh, more time to give us uh, more sermon sermon about uh, our spiritual life, uh, not uh, for the use only, but for me uh, also. Um, tomorrow, uh, we know that Sayyidina is very tired because he came from uh, uh, London uh, uh, to New Jersey and, uh, and San Francisco. Uh, and he will return uh, back to uh, London tomorrow. Uh, Sayyidina is very tired. Sayyidina is very tired and very tired and very tired. But he will be ready for the journey. Tomorrow in the evening, uh, our father Antonio Zikri he will uh, come from Canada, uh, Toronto. Um, uh, and uh, he will stay with us uh, tomorrow uh, and uh, Monday and uh, Tuesday. Uh, we will start the, the Vesper um, 7.30 until 9.30. احنا بكرة معنا أبونا أنطونيو الزكري من كندا. أبونا أنطونيو معروف لنا كلنا. أب حلو خالص وصاحب مواهب وصاحب عصف على آلات متعددة. 
هيكون معانا بكره ان شاء الله ويوم الثلاث وهيصلي معانا القداسات. زي ما متعودين كل كل يوم بالليل بناخد ترنيمه واحده ونختم بيها وسيدنا يصلي معانا ونختم الاجتماع بتاعنا. ممكن نقف Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, and one Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we thank you, Lord, on every occasion, every condition for all things. We thank you for gathering us, Lord, in your home. We thank you for these feasts and fasts to bring it together to reflect on you and your saints. We ask your blessings, Lord, upon this church, upon Abuna and the servants and the congregation here, all those who pray and worship here, Lord, all those who lift their hearts and their voices, all those who serve all those who are served, that you guide and support and strengthen them. We ask you, Lord, for the churches in this area, throughout this country. We ask you, Lord, for our church everywhere, our Holy Father and those who serve with him. All the fullness of your church. Lord, at this time, we also raise our hearts to you for those who are in need, in Iraq, in Syria, in Gaza, Nigeria. Lord, there are so many people who are still suffering for your name's sake and who glorify you in their lives. Bless and support and strengthen them. We ask you for our own brothers and sisters in Egypt as they continue their struggle. And we thank you for the multitude of mercies and miracles you have performed with them. We ask you these prayers, Lord, not only through our own petitions, but through all those who have preceded us, the intercessions of our blessed Mother St. Mary, whom we commemorate, your angels and archangels, the prayers of all your saints, the blessings of these holy days of fast, hear us in unity of heart and strength of your Holy Spirit, and we pray thankfully, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. And now may the love of God the Father, the grace of his only begotten Son, our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go in peace. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Amdu basalam. Salam al قداس بكره من 8 ل 10 يعني عادي يعني هنصلي احنا لكن طبعا سيدنا هادي قلت حيرتاح الصبح عشان حي